Hey guys, Jason Fish. We're gonna work on uh, how to make a swim bait mold. Open pour, hand pour mold. You can do it with just about any worm and any flat top bait. Like this is a mold that I pour, it's a seven inch. See it's got a flat top, that's a hand pour. So we're gonna work on that, how to make a mold. It's pretty simple. Right now, I have a swim bait that I really like, and I can't find it anywhere anymore. But to make the mold, you have to remove the eyes. So I've got my little bait that I like. Pop the eyes out of it. I bought these in a package at, I don't remember what tackle shop. It may have been Dick Sporting Goods and it was in the discount bin and there was no label in the package. It had like a $1.99 tag on it. So I don't even know what brand they are. I'm gonna do this in a two or three part series. First video. As soon as I'm done doing this, I'll show you all some other baits that I make. And after I get the the mold making video is done. We'll do some bait pouring. We might do some before then. It's pretty good. Neat little bait. It's got like a snake head on it. It's got a flat top on it so I can pour it. So what I use for the base for my mold, this is PVC trim board from Home Depot or Lowe's. I think it's Lowe's. It's got wood grain on one side, the other side's smooth, and casting silicone does not adhere to this stuff, so it's great. It's great. So if you got a, you get your board like this, you don't want any debris on it, and. I just buy the, it's quarter inch thick, I buy the six inch wide and just cut it. I make it where it's two inches longer than my bait. So if I'm pouring a five and a half inch bait, I want a little room on each end. Just like if I'm pouring a seven inch bait, pouring the mold for a seven inch bait, I give myself room. For the sides of the mold, I buy it one and a quarter wide. This is a trim. So if you look on these bigger baits, it's just tall enough. So you have to pour the mold all the way through. On the smaller baits, I won't fill the mold up all the way. I'll only come up um, about to where that label is on there. So we're gonna make one for this bait. So I'm gonna use four pieces that are six inches. Make sure and before you get started, take all your baits and wash them and degrease them. Wash them with Dawn soap or whatever you have. Any, any good kitchen soap will work and it'll get all the oil off the outside of the bait. Super glue, same glue you'd use blue eyes on a swim bait. I like this blue Loctite one, it's gel instead of a real thin liquid. 
you need a hot glue gun, I take my girlfriend's. She doesn't know she's a work. And you just want to take your bait and glue it down. I just squirt glue on there. Spread it around with a razor blade really good. What you're gonna wanna do is not glue your fingers together. So you cover one whole side of it with super glue. Make sure it's not dripping over the edges because that'll show in your mold. Flip your bait over. Stick it down. So what happened on that one is that took too long and all the super glue on the bait dried. So all you do is take and put another layer of super glue on it. I'm shooting this without editing it so y'all can see my mistakes. Once that first coat of super glue dries, the second coat will give you a little working coat. That one's done. Here's some baits that I make while we're waiting for that one to stick down all the way. That's the Marling Baits Pud. Made by Epic Bait Molds. The 5 inch Bape. It's spelled B-A-P-E. That's a Stank X mold. 7 inch Rocket. The bluegill color that I pour. I'm on my back porch. That's why it's a little noisy. And then the nine inch rocket, here's my rainbow trout. It's a clear pearl belly, kind of a bubble gum. It's a, the color's neon that made it, but it's a bubble gum pink and a watermelon red back. Okay, that one's stuck good. Where'd I put my razor blades? I have super glue all over me. So all I'm doing is putting a thin coat of super glue on the top of the bait. I wish I knew what brand this was, I'd just buy more, but I can't find them anywhere. I don't even know who made it.
And yes, I'm filming this on my phone. I don't own a bunch of fancy camera stuff. I'd probably just break it. You want about a half inch gap between them because this is going to be a two cavity. You don't want them right up next to each other. But if you put them too far apart, then you end up using so much more rubber. Make sure they're pushed down good so the silicone doesn't get under the bottom. So this is what we've got so far. Just two baits glued down on a board. That's what I've done so far. They're glued down pretty good. And then you're just gonna take your hot glue. And all I do to get started Put a couple dots on there because I don't want it squeezing through into the side with the mold. I got one wall up. This PVC works great for this. It's PVC board. Because the silicone, the molding silicone won't stick to it. couple dots of hot glue. And then we'll do the same thing on these. So right now I've got this. We're going to put ends on it real quick. Now we have our mold. It's fairly simple. Of course, I didn't let it cool enough. I'm a knucklehead. And then you're essentially gonna use the hot glue gun to seal it. Go all the way across the bottom here, do in the corners. So here's our box. So you don't want to silicone the inside shut or hot glue them shut. You're going to want to do all the way across the bottom here. You're going to want to go up every corner here.
and it takes a lot of hot glue. I usually use two to three sticks per mold on smaller banks like this. I'm just checking all the corners. Don't skimp on your glue or you'll end up with unset silicone everywhere. So that's how you make a mold for a bait. If you look, it's all, every, all the seams, the inside seams, but I don't want those big blobs of glue on the inside. So there's a mold made, two cavity for a five inch. And then let's see what else do we have here. That one's done, that one's ready to pour. Y'all are gonna have to wait for part two for me pouring them. This is where you would take, spray your mold release in here. I always use mold release, you don't have to. I do, I don't want anything stuck. You pour that in here. The stuff from bait plastic sets up the fastest. It's ready to pull the mold in 12 hours so I can pour it now and use it for baits tomorrow. And that's what I'll be ordering. It's great stuff. It's what these are made out of. That's a seven inch swim bait mold. And there's the five inch. And there's the nine inch. So it makes it where you can make these. You can glue any flat top bait down to make it. And I'm not saying do this to knock off a lure company. I cannot find that bait. And now we're gonna make one for one of the most wide I can't talk. I can't find my words. For one of the most widely used lures and bass fishing. It's round though. Big thing with the glue them down, you want to make sure they're flat or straight. I guess it doesn't really matter with the Senko. What I do is just follow one of the casting seams. Now 
Now this is a bait that's readily available. Pretty much any lure company out there that makes worms makes this bait. This is a seven inch though. So they're not quite as easy to find. All I did was roll that over on the glue and push it down. So I created my own flat side on there. To pour into. I get to get an equal surprise. I'm gonna pour a bait in a mold I already have when we're done. I need more room. So don't need that one. I don't need the rim. We're gonna pour like a gizzard shad. So those are glued down. I'm not gonna show you all the rest of that. I've already seen that. I already did it. I enjoy pouring baits. This was a fun one. I'm gonna call that one Disco Trout. little rainbow trout here a little five inch five inch that's a killer size bait because it works for everything but that's how you make them all guys fairly simple and then on the next video i have to wait to get my casting silicone in because i have to order it We're gonna pour a pud. But we're gonna do something different first and we're gonna give him spots like a gizzard shed. This is just remelt black, but I'm not pouring, so I don't need to melt the whole thing. I'll show you all after I do this. So 
all I did on each side of the mold was put a black dot right above the peck fin. Take a bonus video in a video. Yeah, it's gonna be long. It's gonna be 30 minutes. Maybe a little more. A little long for a how to YouTube video for fishing stuff. I'm trying to go fast. I'd rather do them like this, unedited, and you'll see what it actually takes. Because so I could edit, and do time lapses, and do this, do that, and it looks like I do all this in five minutes. But it takes time. I tried to make a virus bait last night, red with uh, green dots on it. It didn't work. The dots weren't thick enough. I know there's a couple guys on one of the pages I'm on on Facebook that were really interested in the how to make a mold, and that's kind of who I'm making this for. I figured it would just be easier to do it for YouTube. And then share it too. If you're just getting into this and don't understand it all, you really need to do this outside. If I was doing this in my garage, I would have a respirator on. The noise you're hearing is fans and my air conditioner for my house is right on the other side of the wall. I'm on my back porch, it's really hot right now. Proper safety attire is gloves and a respirator. I'm outside and have good airflow. So I ditched the, I ditched the respirator so y'all could hear me. And I'm a knucklehead. I don't even wear gloves very often doing anything, except for welding. What's y'all's favorite color out of these? The bluegill? Oh, I've got some sunlight so you can actually see it. The sunset right now. That's a seven inch bluegill. How about like a disco trout? Kind of weird looking in the marlin fishing industry. This color combo is really close to a lure called the gay bob. And that's not hate speech or anything. That's just the name of the color is gay bob. And we got the big old bubble gum and clear glitter pearl belly. I really like that one. You get the natural that kind of looks like a gizzard shad or a big mullet. That one will get crushed. And I have to pour more clear because I got destroyed by a snow cone clear today. What else? So we got another little funky rainbow trout color that I made. So this is green watermelon red flake with a real translucent pink and a pearl belly. You know, five inch in the natural mullet slash shad color. Gotta cover the baits so you can see it. The sun's so bright now. I just got a bunch of googly eyes today, so that's what I'll be doing this evening. It's blue and eyeballs on. Here's a cool kind of a crawl red. It's kind of orange or red with black flake. That'll be a good bait. I, all my pores are all open pores and I make them all weedless because I'm in Florida and we constantly have to deal with some kind of weed, bushes, lily pads, pull them through tree branches. Ooh, perfect. I pour baits really, really hot. Most people pour 325, 350 range. I pour 375, 380. 
You don't want to get plastisol, which is a liquid plastic over 400 or you'll burn it. Let's see how a gizzard shad turns out. Got a little flashing on it, no big deal. That'll be dry in a couple minutes. I don't have a pressure pot because I don't make baits for profit. And a pressure, a good pressure pot to get all the bubbles out of your plastic to about 200 bucks. But pour it, let the bubbles rise to the top, hit it with a butane torch. A lot of people complain about the tail dimple in these and 90% of what I make is for me, so I don't care about the dimple. That comes from pouring hot, and it's nature of the beast with open pores. This won't take long to cool because this is the first bait in this mold today. So it'll be cool relatively fast. Sorry y'all are watching me sit here and uh, stare at plastic drying. I use these little quarter inch brass rods for stirring my plastic. Use a butter knife. It adds extra bubbles. Then I'm an adult, so if I steal a butter knife out of the kitchen, I'm just stealing it for myself. What else do we have? Oh yeah, I do not make molds for profit. It's not financially justifiable. I had that plastic really hot. My dogs are barking at people in the park. It's so much more fun to do videos on Facebook Live because I have people to talk to. What else do y'all want to see? Comment below. Funky color combinations. This is a funky one that I made. So, gold pearl with a blue pearl stripe with a gunmetal bottom. That's a funky one. Um, we could do a bunch of thin blue line law enforcements. That was a fun one. I made a bunch of those for a friend of mine. He's like, I don't care if they catch fish, I like them. Think of some color combos though. I like weird. It's almost as bad as watching paint dry. I'm watching plastic dry. I hope y'all can hear me okay. I have an extra fan because it's about 90 degrees out here. There's a good color that I make. It's a gunmetal pearl over pearl white belly. That'll work just about anywhere. And then a gunmetal over clear pearl belly. There's a pink over pearl pud. I really like that. I use pink in a lot of my baits instead of red. And here's what it looks like all watermelon red flake. I'm holding my hand up to block the sun, because if not, you can't really see it. It's got glare on it. Then I have this mold. It's a mold a lot of guys use. I don't remember where I bought it, but I modified it to have a worm hook. That's a seven inch in uh, all pour, no paint, fire tiger. Really, really neat looking.
pud. And there you go. It's like a gizzard shad. Got the black dot in it. That's a fun little bait. Fun little bait. If you're gonna buy the pud mold from uh, Epic Bait Molds, do not buy. Plastic that they use for its labeled swim bait. Buy the bait plastics 212. Medium. It's the best one for that swim bait. And that's it, guys. Pretty fun first video. It's long, 40 minutes. Sorry. <laughs>